as the second session of the 112th Congress comes to an end, I wanted to take a few moments to recap some of the legislative initiatives that I've been working on this year in the House of Representatives. You know, like most Americans, 5th District residents voiced their concern about the budget crisis, job creation, and the constitutional role of the federal government. You know, I'm proud to say I was one of the f on the front lines for each of these policy debates in Congress. You know, introducing prudent solutions that went to the heart of our country's most pressing needs. Now, as you may recall, it was back last January, I was honored to be appointed to two key budget positions. That was including Vice Chairman of the Budget Committee and Chairman of the Budget and Spending Task Force for the Republican Study Committee. As Chairman of the RSC Budget and Spending Task Force, this session I wrote Cut, Cap, and Balance a 2013 fiscal budget that would do what everyone in Washington thought to be impossible, balance our budget in five years. You know, had Congress adopted this CCB, it would have cut $9 trillion over 10 years. It would have cut discretionary spending to $931 billion, that's slightly below the 2008 levels approved by Nancy Pelosi, and it would have frozen discretionary spending until the budget balances in 2017. In addition to the RFC budget, I also authored the Budget and Accounting Transparency Act of 2012. That's H.R. 3581. See, this legislation was part of a, a comprehensive set of reforms to overhaul Washington's broken budget process. So on February 7th of this year, it passed the House. It also introduced legislation to improve the Congressional Budget Office and General Accounting Office's reporting requirements for TARP and the stimulus as well. This was signed into law by President Obama on December 4th of 2012. You know, as the founder and chairman of the House Constitution Caucus, I believe we need to advocate for limited government to protect individual liberties as intended by our founders and prescribed by our Constitution. This past September, on the 225th anniversary of the signing of the United States Constitution, I joined dozens of students to celebrate the rights and freedoms of all Americans. The day began with an assembly at Green Hills Elementary School where I quizzed the students on American history. Then, in conjunction with the National Park Service and the Montague Historical Society, my office organized a tour of the Neldon Roberts House. This is a 19th century schoolhouse where local children first learned about the founding principles of our nation. And there I joined students and parents for a tour of the, one of the 5th District's historic sites and we heard from historians about the importance the Constitution has on our local and national history. And in keeping with the caucus's mission, which is to promote an American future that remains true to its revolutionary past, I believe that sharing the history of our nation's founding is an especially important facet in the education of our youth. At the start of the 112th Congress, I was honored to be named the chairman of the Financial Services Subcommittee on Capital Markets and Government Sponsored Enterprises. See, from this position, my top three priorities have been promoting healthy and dynamic capital markets to ensure robust economic growth and job creation, and conducting robust and rigorous oversight of the executive branch and agencies, and also reforming our nation's housing finance system and removing taxpayer exposure. Over the last two years, my subcommittee held 31 hearings. We passed 32 pieces of legislation and started to lay the groundwork for reform of the GSEs and we slowed the regulatory tsunami, which is Dodd-Frank. One piece of legislation I was especially pleased to get passed was the Jobs Act. As chairman of the subcommittee that approved the underlying bills included in the Jobs Act, I was also glad to see these common sense proposals finally enacted into law. See, eliminating unnecessary regulation and reducing costly expenses needlessly imposed on small businesses has long been a top priority of mine with new businesses startups down to the lowest level in 30 years under the Obama administration. We needed to do something to make it easier to conduct business here in the U.S. It is my sincere hope that we can build off the JOBS Act momentum and find similar cooperation on the dozens of House passed bills that are still awaiting action over in the Senate. For a more detailed explanation of all the legislation I introduced this year, you can go to my website. That's at garrett.house.gov. And to stay on top of my latest work in Congress, be sure to follow me over at Facebook at facebook.com slash rep Scott Garrett. That's facebook.com slash rep Scott Garrett. Also, I've recently joined the conversation on Twitter. I'd like you to follow me there. And I can be found on twitter.com slash rep Garrett. So, as 2012 comes to a close, 
It's my prayer that God bless you and your loved ones this holiday season, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you.